Conservatives from across the country are meeting next week in Halifax for the party's convention. It's supposed to be an opportunity for Andrew Scheer to rally his troops before next year's federal election. But these days, the Conservative leader is facing some infighting in the ranks. Conservative MPs have been speaking out against Scheer's former leadership rival, Mac, rival I'm sorry, Maxime Bernier, and his tweets on what he calls, quote, extreme multiculturalism. Conservative public services critic Tony Clement told the Canadian press today that, quote, the Max Bernier that I supported during the leadership race wouldn't have taken the position he's taking now. He went on to say, quote, I think that Max may soon find that he's a guy raging at the sky rather than being taken seriously on some of these things. And Clement isn't alone in speaking out against his colleague. Conservative defense critic James Bazan has said, quote, Max continues to exercise poor judgment and is constantly at odds with caucus. So what does this mean for the party ahead of next week's convention and what should we expect to see in terms of the party's plans for 2019? It is time for the Power Panel. Joining me now from Calgary, journalist Jen Gerson. Marty, Marty Patroquin of iPolitics is in Montreal. And here with me in studio, the CBC's very own Katie Simpson. Hi, everybody. Nice to see hey you. There. Hello. Uh, Jen, I'm going to start with you. What do you think of all this infighting, and how do you think it bodes for, or what, is it, what happens next week? Well, <clears throat> I, you know... I thought it was very interesting uh, when Bernier came out so so strong against supply management, and I, I didn't read too much into that. But you know, it, it increasingly does raise the specter of the fa of the of, of the possibility that that this guy is, has gone rogue within can within ca um, the caucus, and he's completely willing to derail the entire message of caucus um, uh, if they allow this guy to sort of continue on this particular track. And that raises a lot of questions about. Um, the degree to which Andrew Scheer is going to start to crack down on the rest on him and on the rest of caucus generally. Um, so far, we haven't really seen Scheer take a really aggressive stance against Bernier. And, uh, you know, I wonder how much that's going to be able to continue. I mean, uh, Stephen Harper had a bit of a reputation for being a, a strong-armed guy, a very centralized figure, a very conservative figure who, would, who really would have clamped down on stuff like this very early on. And, and um, it's interesting to see whether or not Scheer is going to have to follow in his footsteps if, you know, people like Bernier are going to continue on this track. Marty, how long does yeah. Scheer have to decide whether or not he follows in, for example, as Jen was saying, Mr. Harper's footsteps and kind of clamps down on this? I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily agree. My, my thing is, is that, you know, I'll be charitable. I call it highly ironic that they're complaining about what Bernier is saying. They've indulged uh, Mr. Scheer, uh, Michelle Rempel. They've indulged in the exact same kind of identity politics that Max Bernier put out in those tweets. Uh, you, you, you read the, the, the quote there at the top. Uh, you know, extreme multiculturalism. These are scare quotes. Extreme multiculturalism doesn't mean anything. It's like when Michelle Rempel came out and said, you know, unchecked immigration, which isn't true. We have immigration caps. You can read that on Wikipedia. She's uh, coming out. Did she ever say really that there's too much diversity? No, she's never said anything. Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not necessarily saying that they went as far, but they're doing the exact same kind of. of, the, the, of, the, of no, the, 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 the idea. The idea that what Bernie has put out there is of a kind with everything. What everything else in the Conservative Caucus has put out there, I, I just disagree with that. I, I think that that's fine. Gone, but, wait, but, I think he's gone way over the line here, but, and I think that most but, other but, Conservatives. But, um, but, let, but, but, but let me. But, okay, but let me. Go, yeah, finish, Marty. My, my, th my the, Andrew Scheer comes out, they, cut, they continually call this thing a crisis, and then Michelle Rempel comes out and actually says that CP, which, you know, Canadian Press, a wire service, which is, you know, apolitic as a definition, calls it a, a liberal uh, echo chamber. They're, they're doing the exact same type of politics as Maxine Bernier. And so uh, Maxine Bernier goes that much further, and they act all surprised. They really, really shouldn't. Do you think that's true, Katie? I think that the Conservatives, the longer this goes on, the, lo the worse it's going to be for Andrew Scheer. And I think that, uh, you know, that we have seen the way the leadership race played out. We have seen them, you know, some people in the party dabble with that identity politics. But at the same time, the longer this goes on, the longer this drags on, the worse it is for Andrew Scheer. Because as long as they are fighting with each other, they are not focused on the Liberals. And if they are going to be ready for 2019 and they want to have take a serious run at the Liberals and try and defeat Justin Trudeau, uh, they are going to have to be united. Conservatives that are fighting amongst each other are not going to perform well at the polls unless they unite within if they if they're fighting each other how are they going to fight the, the liberals so the longer this goes on the longer this drags out uh, the more complicated it's going to be for Andrew Scheer we had Deepak O'Brien on yesterday Jen and he was kind of dismissive of that idea and said like I you know he's the, he's he's denounces what Bernier is saying but he's like he's my friend there's enough room in this party it's a big tent uh blue party mm. people are making a bigger deal out of this than it has to be what do you think about that Jen um no, I mean, it's a fair question. I, I think the reason why Bernie is doing this is because it speaks to a certain base. And, like, like, let's not kid ourselves. There's a certain base within the conservative 
party in ranks that is highly xenophobic and um, highly concerned about uh, more immigration and all these sorts of things. And so it, it becomes really hard for Sheer to uh, uh, cut that guy loose when you know there's a fear that he's speaking to a certain um, uh, unspoken sentiment within the party. And I, you know, I, I don't agree. I think personally, to allow it to continue is totally irresponsible. Personally, like. It just like look, regardless of whether or not you think that this is going to be an effective wedge issue that will that will peel people away from the the the, the, the Liberal Party, y you know, it's so <laughs> irresponsible to try and do that on the backs of of, of marginalized groups. I mean, if you want to talk about uh, social values and, co and social cohesion, you know, the better, more responsible way to do that is to talk about shared values and social cohesion and the things that we all have in common. It's not to rail against um, y you know somebody who named a park after a Pakistani leader. That's insane. Um, so, you know, if, if, if this, is, this is not something that the Conservatives are willing to clamp down on, I, I honestly think that it's just, you know, above being irresponsible and, and unethical, it's bad politics. It's going to bite them in the butt. Whenever the Conservatives have, have you know, sort of trod down this path of white grievance politics, it's actually backfired for them. And I think, I think it will do so in this case. But I think you just answered. I think you just answered my, my my question about it. I think I think they're all. I think the reason that that Shear hasn't clamped down nearly to the extent that he would have anybody else on any other issue is precisely because Maxine Bernier and and Andrew Shear and to a certain extent Michelle Rempel are all talking to that same xenophobic base or trying to appeal to it. The only difference is is that Maxine Bernier is saying it a lot louder and a lot clearer. Do you think that's? I don't know. That's. Uh, do you think that's a generalization or do you think that's true? I think that. I think at this point. Given what we saw in the leadership race and given, you know, the candidates that it sort of dabbled in this the most, uh, look at how Kelly Leach's performance was. Uh, so th there, there, there is a small, sure. there, there certainly is a, a small, uh, you know, base within that party, that unspoken base that this kind of politics does appeal to uh, and that people in the party will not want to acknowledge. But um, again, the longer this drags on, but we have seen this happen in the party before to something that drags on becomes a distraction. Look what happened with Senator Lynn Bayak and look how long it took for Andrew Shear to take action on that. He took hit after hit after hit. And then finally, when uh, loyalty became the issue, not necessarily what she said, but because, uh, you know, Andrew Shear's office had said they had asked her to take down those uh, posts on her website about Indigenous Canadians and Indigenous peoples, uh, and she didn't comply. And that's right. when he took action. So uh, how long is it going to take for Andrew Shear to become frustrated with uh, Maxime Bernier and the lack of loyalty? I think that that's when you're going to start to see some sort of movement. It'll be the loyalty question. It won't necessarily be what he saying. Jen, how do you think this plays out next week? Like, how, what are you watching for in the convention? Because it sounds like Mr. Bernier will be there. Well, we'll watch to see what actually hits the floor, right? I mean, it, there's always a, a, a lot of kerfuffle ahead of every convention for every party about all of the extreme sorts of uh, measures that, 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 you know, the, the um, uh, delegates want to debate. But, but you know, usually um, the party leaders find a way to get the icky stuff off the, off, off the agenda. And what winds up hitting the floor tends to be pretty benign. That's not always the case, but usually that's what happens. So we're going to see if if what Maxime has, Brittany has put out there has been um, the harbinger of, of, of something more extreme that potentially is going to come from the grassroots, or whether or not he's just going to be um, relegated to the side and largely ignored by the rest of the party and the rest of caucus. I don't know which way that's going to go. Um, my guess is probably to expect the more boring of the two outcomes, um, but it'll be interesting to see. And to be fair, I know, Marty, you're set, you were sort of citing some other examples there. Like, like we read Tony Clement. We had Deepak on here yesterday saying, Deepak O'Brien saying, like, very specifically condemning what he said and saying, I one, protect that. There one, are some conservatives one, saying that this is wrong. 100%, but the buck stops at Andrew Shear, And the fact that this has been allowed to drag on for how many news cycles now is, speaks volumes to me. All right. I'm going to leave it at that point. Stay with us. The Power Panel will be back for a final round right after this.